like Creekside won the toss, deferred to the second half. Yes, sir. We'll be kicking up. off to St. Peter's Prep. Let's make some noise, football fans. Let's make some noise. Are you ready for some football? Folks, put your seatbelts on because we got a really good game. It's going to be a high speed contest. Yes, indeed. So lock in. Lock in. Zone 6 Classic. We want to welcome each and everybody that's facing the place. Stick State on today. I go nowhere. We've got a great day. Two great teams, great coaches, great officials, all the makings of a great game. Thank you, fans. Make some noise for yourself, fans. We're getting ready for this great game. Anyway, I seen those Seminoles around here anywhere.
afternoon. Fans, on behalf of Morehouse College President, Dr. David A. Dr. David A. Thomas and Director of Athletics, Harold Ellis, welcome to BT Harvey Stadium. The Morehouse Tigers' first home game will be October 14th against Miles College. Stand up for the national anthem. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, for high school football here on Flow Sports. I'm Scott Sudikoff, joined by Matt Goldstein. Happy to be here for you to bring you the action between Creekside, Georgia, and St. Peter's Prep of New Jersey. And, Matt, we're looking forward to this one. Push back a couple hours because of the high temperatures. It's 97 degrees here at kickoff. But, Matt, start of a new football season, so we're excited. Yeah, no, you couldn't ask for a better day. Nothing but sunny skies, like you said. Very hot, over 100 degrees is the, is the real feel down there on Atlanta as we get set for kick here. Creekside going to kick it off first. St. Peter's will receive the opening kick. The Marauders playing their first game of the season and the kickoff taken from the 10-yard line and taken up the far sideline. A good return for Hassan Moore out to about the 45, about a 35-yard return for Moore. Multiple flags, though, down on the field, so we will check out to see what this early penalty is. Three flags down here, Matt. Yeah, and usually where that is, that's not usually a block on the back that far downfield. I'm thinking it's probably some sort of face mask personal foul penalty. Trying to pick up the call here, and so the penalty going on St. Peter is going to move that good kickoff that was about 35 yards on the return by Moore. Going to move it back, and we'll see where this one gets spotted, and it'll be Marauders football for the first time in this game and the first time this season for the St. Peter's offense to come out on to the field. 
We'll take a look at some of the star players to look out for on this Marauder offense. The quarterback, Tyler Bell, making his first start last year. Only threw 16 passes, 44% completion. Jalen Klein split carries last year at running back, had 974 yards. Hassan Moore, who just had that return. Dallas Reese, the two top receivers for the Marauders. So first and 10 from the 23-yard line. And Bell will hand it off. And it's burst up the middle on the first play. Be a seven-yard gain up to the 30-yard line by Jalen Klein. So a good first down and 10 play for the Marauders. And you look at the quarterback, Tyler Bell, making his first career start at St. Peter's Prep. And you would assume you're going to see a lot of Jalen Klein. That's the way that both teams really highlight the running attack over the passing game, but a good start for St. Peter's. And that was one of the things that their head coach, Rich Hansen, said that he was really looking for St. Peter's to have a fast start. Obviously, great kick gets pulled back, but on first down, getting a gain of six to start things off. Second down and a long three, and the pass over the middle was intended for number one, Hassan Moore. Almost was picked off in the middle of the linebacking court, and we've got a penalty flag for the second time today. Looked like another penalty on one St. Peter's. Field. Thank you, Matt. And so, a couple of penalties early here for St. Peter's. And a ball will go back to the 25-yard line. So that'll be second down. It remains, but now second down and eight from the 25-yard line. St. Peter's was 7-4 and four last season. They averaged 34 points per game. Second and eight. Bell with the give to Klein. He stumbles ahead for just one yard. Couple of Seminoles in on the tackle. Shimon Johnson, number seven, was in there. Call it no gain. And it's third down and eight for St. Peter's Prep here in the early going. And that's going to be a false start is getting a way... Too big of a jump was Andres Perez. And then we'll move it back another five. It'll be third down and 13. So the penalty is the early issue here for the Marauders, Matt. Yeah, and for St. Peter's, this is their first game of the season. Obviously, they're probably juiced up making the trip down from New Jersey. And, you know, you're going to have those type of penalties. Last week, Creekside played a game. They won versus Kennesaw, a game they won 35 and 23. So although they're, they're fired up and ready for this, they have one game under their belt. I'm sure their coaching staff this week kind of you know, took out the kinks of what went wrong last week. And for St. Peter's early on, obviously, uh, they got to they gotta calm themselves down a bit. Third down and 13 now from the 20. Four wide receivers set here for Tyler Bell's offense. They run a spread offense at St. Peter's Prep under Rich Hansen III in his third year as the head coach. Bell looking left, steps up in the pocket, will fake a throw. Now he has to run, gets to the 30-yard line. He's going to have the first down and more. A big play for Tyler Bell. Gets out near midfield, picks up about 30 yards on a third down and 13. Wow, great job by Tyler Bell. And the thing that, that impressed me the, the most on that play was Bell kept his eyes downfield. He didn't try to get out of the pocket and run right away. He allowed players to come in. He kept moving, eyes downfield. When finally nothing opened up and enough green in front of him, he took off. Big play, first down, Tyler Bell. 29 yards on the ground for Bell, who mentioned through 16 passes a year ago, 7 of 16 for 136 yards, two TDs, no INTs. A 6'2", 175-pound sophomore for the Marauders. First and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Once again, the four wide receivers set. Bell, quick turn, throw to the near side, and complete the quick hitter to the 47-yard line of Creekside. That's caught by Dallas Reese for a gain of four. Just a simple route right there, trying to get the quarterback Tyler Bell in the passing game into, to, into a rhythm and a nice throw and catch that time. Dallas Reese had 15 catches last season for 265 yards. He's a big body receiver, 6'3", 195-pound senior. 
Second and six from the creek side, 47 yard line. This is a defense last season that only allowed 10.2 points per game, although they did give up 23 last week to Kennesaw Mountain. Pistol formation, Klein up the middle, trying to bounce it out to the left side, gets free along the sideline, first down and out of bounds. Shy of the 35 yard line, forced out of bounds by number one, Ricky McCrary, but a first down to the 37 yard line of Creekside, a gain of 10. Yeah, one of the things that won't show up in the stats right there, but a great block by the wide receiver at the top of the screen. DJ Brown coming down and blocking the linebacker. That allowed Klein to bounce it to the outside, enough to pick up a first down. So the ball spotted at the Creekside 37 yard line after the 10 yard gain, second first down of the drive for the Marauders. They've fought through three penalties already in this game. See how the Creekside defense responds as Bell takes the shotgun snap, launches it, has a man down the sideline, but overshoots his intended wide receiver, DJ Brown, as Brown had a couple of steps on the defender there, but the ball was a couple of steps out in front of him. Yeah, that's that's a ball that Tyler Bell's going to want to have back is DJ Brown right off the line of scrimmage beat Shane Kelly, the two-way player, wide receiver, and defensive back for Creekside and just overshoot. It'll be second down and 10 from the 37-yard line of Creekside, opening drive of the game. First game of the season for St. Peter's Prep from Jersey City, New Jersey. 7-4 last year. They lost in the quarterfinals of the non-public New Jersey State Tournament. Bell making his first career start. Klein up the middle, contacted at about the 36-yard line and taken down at the 35. And again, Shimon Johnson with four tackles. Gets the stop. 6'4", 255-pound senior for the Seminoles. Gain of two. So that brings up third and eight. Of course, saw St. Peter's have a third down and 13 a few moments ago. And... That's when the quarterback Bell busted open for a 29-yard run. Well, it seems right now St. Peter's a little bit confusion that we're going to have a timeout, just letting the clock go down and burning it right there. A timeout called by St. Peter's. That'll give us a chance to give you some more information about these two programs as we are just four minutes into this first quarter of play. Let's talk more about St. Peter's, their head coach, Rich Hansen III. 15 and eight over his first two seasons. And it's a program that's had a lot of success, 17 championships just uh, four years ago. Of course, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, Pittsburgh Steeler, one of the notable uh, football alum for St. Peter's. They also have uh, some notable alumni outside of football, Hall of Fame basketball coach, Bob Hurley about the actor Nathan Lane from The Birdcage and other movies. Actor Pablo Montalban. I know that's one of Matt's favorites. He's one of Matt's <laughs> favorites. And uh, see, they, you know, 40, 34 points scored last year, but gave up 30 points. So I'm sure it's a defense that they'd like to shore up this year. Yeah, and, and on defense, they only have four returning starters. So they have uh, one, one at the D-line, two at the linebacker, one in the secondary. So a lot of new faces to hopefully see a, a rise in that defensive unit. Let's quickly tell you more about Creekside. They went 10-3 and three last season. Very good year. They lost in the quarterfinals of the state tournament in Georgia. But they were 7-0 and in their region games. And Maurice Dixon in his seventh year as the head coach. I mean, it doesn't get much harder than an 0-10 first season, but look at the bounce back since. 44 and 18 and 12 players that we'll talk about as this game goes on that have scholarship offers and several that have already committed to very high-level programs across the country. Yeah, I mean, you just look at that differential in the offense and, and mm -hmm. points allowed, right? I mean, you're putting up 38 points a game. You know, you, you have a little bit of wiggle room on, on defense, and, and you could say the same on the flip on the flip side, only giving up 10 points a game. Outstanding job by Maurice Dixon and his coaching staff. All right, back to action here. Third down and eight from the 35-yard line of Creekside for St. Peter's Prep. They've already converted 
A third and 13 on a 29-yard run by the quarterback, Bell. He'll throw a quick pass to the 30-yard line and fighting for the first down to the 25 goes D.J. Brown, who is the man who was open on that ball down the sideline a few moments ago that should have been a touchdown, but the Marauders do get the first down to the 25-yard line, a gain of 10. Yeah, Bell that time was not going to miss D.J. Brown, a quick dig route, and you know, Brown using his, his size at six feet, 180 pounds to shield off the defender and pick up just enough to, to keep moving the sticks. Second, third down conversion now for St. Peter's. 52 yards so far on this drive that began at their own 23 yard line. Man in motion is Hassan Moore. Bell will give to Klein. Trying to get outside left tackle. Flag comes flying in as he goes out of bounds. In the area there defensively, Kevon Gray. And let's see, probably usually a situation where we're gonna have holding, but. Yep. It's the fourth St. Peter's prep penalty already. Yeah, Coach, uh, Coach Ruth Sanson the third is not going to be pleased right now with the amount of penalties on this opening drive. You always see early on in the season there's going to be more flags as, than you typically have later on, but already four in the opening drive. So the ball will go back to the 35-yard line, and it'll be first down and 20. Jalen Klein running back for St. Peter's has a couple of offers right now. Syracuse and Sacred Heart among them. Split carries last year with Isaiah Giles, who graduated. So now Klein, that number one back, 974 yards a year ago on the ground. First and 20, they give to Klein. Trying to sneak behind one of his offensive linemen, his center, Emmett Honey. And able to get up to the 30, getting five yards back. It'll be second down and 15. Yeah, and you'll, you'll take that any time on, on first and, and long, obviously, with it being with the penalty and be able to cut that in half. Now you make it manageable at second down. You put yourself in a situation that you don't need to throw the football. You're still right there that you can still run using the strength of Klein. Second and 15, just shy of the 30-yard line, so a long 15 yards for the Marauders. Plenty of time on the play clock here as Bell with the check with me to the sideline. Relays what the adjusted play call is. Three-man rush, and nice screen over the middle, caught by Klein, and... Clyde tripped up at the 23-yard line, a gain of seven. It'll bring up third down in eight yet again, a third down. But St. Peter's Prep already two for two, converting third down. That was a great play call right there as Creekside's defensive line thought they had a free shot at the quarterback, Tyler Bell, but when everybody's running free like that, you got to chart, change course, recognize that there was a screen, and. Klein continues to impress on this drive. Creekside's defense last week did have two sacks against Kennesaw Mountain. They wouldn't mind one right here. With this third down and A play, have to get it to the 15-yard line. The ball spotted at the Creekside 23. As this is the opening drive of the game that started at the 23-yard line for St. Peter's Prep. And now we have whistles and a second timeout already called by St. Peter's. So they're down to just one timeout with 5.08 remaining in the first quarter. And it'll be third down and eight. We'll take a quick 30-second uh, break, and when we come back, we'll bring you the third down and eight of this opening drive for St. Peter's Prep.
Scott Sudikoff, Matt Goldstein back with you. We're in Atlanta, Morehouse College. Opening drive of this game started at the 23-yard line for St. Peter's. They're at now the 23-yard line of Creekside. Third down and eight. Marauders already two for two on third down. Bell will step up, loft it to the corner of the end zone, and that is intercepted. What a huge play for the Seminoles. And picking it off is Kevon Gray, the senior who's committed to the University of Virginia. And a huge, huge play after a long drive by St. Peter's results in no points. And that's one of those times that you have a young quarterback, just a sophomore, Tyler Bell, making his first career start. And we saw him on a third down play earlier this drive, keep his eyes downfield and then take off running. That time he tried to force the ball. He went for the big play into the end zone for the touchdown. He had space in front of him. If he pulls that ball down and runs, he's probably picking up a first down and keeping this drive alive. So a huge play for Gray, the interception. It's the fourth turnover that the defense of Creekside has already forced this season and the third interception that they had. So that's, that hurts for St. Peter's. You start out your own 23, you get the ball down to the opposite 23 yard line. You take seven minutes off the clock, but you do not score, but hampered by four penalties. Started with the kickoff that looked like Hassan Moore had returned the kickoff all the way out beyond the 40 yard line. And then you had a holding, a false start, a legal man down the field. So there was some issues there for the Marauders. And now we'll get to see this Creekside offense, Matt, that last week scored 35 points in a 35-23 win over Kennesaw Mountain. Yeah, yeah some, they have some explosive players that play by their quarterback, Vin, last week, 110 yards and, and two touchdowns through the air. He was 7 of 14 with those two touchdowns thrown and then got the two-headed monster with the running backs. Roderick McCrary, 17 carries for 115 against Kennesaw Mountain and Travis Terrell, 17 carries for 151. And then Shane Kelly reeled in five catches for 110 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Barry, quarterback threw for over 1,500 yards a year ago with 17 touchdowns and nine interceptions. They start at the 20-yard line after the interception in the end zone. Terrell flexes into the backfield behind the quarterback, Barry, and Terrell will take the handoff and get a very minimal gain as he is quickly swallowed up by Xavier Miles, the two-way starter who has got plenty of high-level offers, including right there in Atlanta, Georgia Tech, as well as Rutgers, Ole Miss, and Michigan State's. Yeah, Miles did a great job that time, shutting the offensive lineman and hitting the gap and ran running back. McCray ran right, or uh, excuse me, Terrell went right into his arms. We'll call that no gain officially. Second down and 10. Barry, the handoff this time. Terrell again coming around, taking it, and he will be dragged out of bounds shy of the 30 yard line. Making the stop, Marvell Davis, who had 48 tackles and two and a half sacks last season, brings up a third down and two. Eight yard gain. And you're going to see a lot of Travis Terrell. The, one of the two running backs has over 28 Division I offers, had a one touchdown last week in, in their opening game win. Third and two. Terrell again, has the first down, has more, has a lot of green space in front of him, and Travis Terrell is gone. 72-yard touchdown run for Travis Terrell, which surpasses his longest run of last week, which was 71 yards, his second touchdown of the season, and it's 6-0 Creekside. Uh, what a burst of speed by Terrell, all set up by the offensive line. There was a huge hole on that left side of the offensive line. We talked about it earlier, a couple guys going to D1 schools at left tackle, left guard created a huge space, and then Terrell, when it, once he hit that hole hard, just continued to separate 
from St. Peter's defenders into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, Caleb Holmes, the left tackle for the Seminoles, headed to Pitt. And the left guard, Brian Bam Williams, headed to Jackson State. I believe we got an unsportsmanlike conduct, though, on that. Uh, uh, oh, no, offsetting penalties. Okay. Travis Terrell gave that, you know, the little the deuces hand signal as he was looking back, <laughs> running, you know, peace as he was headed towards the end zone. But St. Peter's got flagged for something as well. And so they'll line up for the PAT here. Try to make it 7 nothing. Clifford Ai, who was 5 for 5 on PAT attempts last week. Senior kicker, also does the punting duties for Creekside. So eight minutes gone by in this one, and St. Peter's Prep had a long drive, a seven-minute drive. It went from their own 23 to Creekside's 23, but threw an interception in the end zone. And then all it takes is three plays to go 80 yards for Creekside, capped off by the 72-yard touchdown run by Travis Terrell. Point after is up and through. Creekside has a 7-0 lead. Four minutes left to go in the first quarter. The Seminoles on top of the Marauders. We'll step aside, take a break here as you're watching high school football on Flow Sports. We'll be right back. Creekside kicking off after taking a 7-0 lead on the 72-yard touchdown run by Travis Terrell. And a short kickoff. And the ball taken out by Andres Perez to the 38-yard line. And that is where St. Peter's Prep will start off here. So, Matt, if you're St. Peter's Prep, you're off your first offensive drive, you're mostly happy with it because you moved the ball, got some big plays, but you had the four penalties, then the INT but something to build off of now, but you really have to have a nice answer here. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it obviously created some confidence on their side of the football. I think Tyler Bell obviously just being a sophomore quarterback, first career start, probably a little anxious on that throw, but you know I think you're gonna see a lot more Jalen Klein continue to run the ball, take the pressure off the quarterback, Bell. First and 10 from the 38, Seminoles showing blitz. They'll go right up the middle with it. Klein now bounces out to the left side and puts a stiff arm out there. And then an extra throw down there along the sideline. And that will be a penalty on Creekside. Zaren yeah, just, Jones. Yeah, not, not necessary whatsoever by Jones. Klein was out of bounds by three, four, five yards. The play was already done and then throwing him down. Now you're just putting your defense in a tough situation, adding on extra yardage 15 extra yards to that run by Klein and 
you know, give, give St. Peter's Prep's offensive line a lot of credit. That time Creekside was bringing the blitz. They brought five. They picked it up extremely well, and, and Klein did a great job, made one man miss, and picked up very positive yardage, and then obviously adding on those 15 extra yards. Now you're in, uh, defensively for Creekside, you know, not in, not in the best of situations. Ends up being 24 yards all told to the Creekside 38, first down and 10. First and 10 from the 38. Bell has Klein to his right. Three wide receivers here to the near side, right of the formation. Bell looks that way, throws the screen, connects to Hassan Moore. Moore able to stay off of one tackle, cuts it back up the middle, drags a few, and gets to the 11-yard line. Hassan Moore, a gain of 27. But now we might have flags again back near the line of scrimmage, and we do. Another holding penalty. That's going to wipe away a 27-yard gain. So you gain 24 with the help of the penalty. You gain 27 on a play that you think you have, and now it gets marched back again. And these are these things in this opening quarter for St. Peter's, the penalties, the interceptions. They, they've been able to move the football, a lot of positives, but... Right now, the negatives are the ones that are sticking out. So now you go back nine yards to the 47, and it's first down and 19 from the 47. Pistol formation. Dallas Reese goes in motion here. He'll set up next to Bell in the backfield. Klein, straight up the middle, right up the gut. Nothing fancy about that. Once again, Shimon Johnson on the stop. And they mark him down at the 44, a gain of three. It'll be second down in 16. Yeah, Shimon Johnson, he's been all over the field for Creekside, lining up on the edge and third tackle already in this first quarter. Second and 16 from the 44-yard line. And again, you see the offense, St. Peter's Prep, they'll line up, they'll see what the defense is doing, and then check back towards the coaching staff to get the call of what they want to do. Always in this four-wide receiver, one running back alignment in shotgun. Klein tries to dance. Has absolutely no space. And the ball moved back a, a yard. A loss of one. It'll be third down and 17. Well, Creekside's front seven last week had 10 tackles for loss. And obviously that's a strength of their team. We saw it in the graphic at the beginning, only averaging... 10 points given up all of last year. Uh, last last week, obviously, gave up 23 points. But getting pressure in the backfield, getting pressure on the quarterback is definitely something that Maurice Dixon and his staff preaches. Now we got a timeout called. With 137 left to go in the first quarter. Not sure who called the timeout on this instance. I didn't catch the signal or the announcements. We think earlier St. Peter's, yeah, I think Creekside took this timeout and we're checking. We believe St. Peter's, maybe that first timeout that happened was actually an official timeout, not a timeout called by the Marauders, but we'll try to figure that out. As you can see right now, I have one timeout left for St. Peter's and Creekside will be down to two timeouts here in the first half and obviously dealing with the conditions as well. That, uh, I wonder if there will be officials timeouts just to allow the players to get an extra break to grab some water. Again, with the real feel up over 100 degrees right now. As you're going to hear the public address announcer telling the fans, please make sure you are <laughs> hydrated. 
Feels like 101 degrees right now at Morehouse College. So this is second and, uh, excuse me, third. This is third down and 17. Have to get the ball to the 28-yard line. Third and 17. Marauders two for three on third down. Threw an INT the last time. Bell looking towards the end zone again. Overshoots DJ Brown. It'll be fourth down and 17. And good coverage once again. That's the same spot that DJ Brown, or, or excuse me, the, the quarterback Tyler Bell was throwing when he was picked off to the near side of the field towards the corner of the end zone. And same, same area, good coverage, 2-3 Creekside defenders in that area and now that'll force St. Peter's who looked like it was a promising drive once again deterred by penalties will now have to punt the ball away. There's the punt from St. Peter's prep bounces at the 15 yard line takes a marauder bounce and ooh, dangerous play by that Seminole right there to be that close to the football and then Maybe you could say, although in the end, ends up being a heads-up play because he partially, potentially avoids that ball going inside the five-yard line. Falling down on it was, that was Shane Kelly. And that's where Creekside will have the football. And as you can see, we were right. Uh, we, we corrected at St. Peter's earlier, only used one timeout. So we think that there's going to be some official timeouts to get an extra break here and there, given the weather conditions. So it'll be Creekside Ball when we come back. Oh, no, we're going to stay here. They're coming back out on the field. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take the commercial break at the next time. So the ball spotted at the eight-yard line. Three-play, 80-yard drive the last time for Creekside. 72-yard touchdown run by Travis Terrell. And the point after to make it 7-0 Seminoles. Tough snap there. And Berry tosses it out to the left side and breaking out of a tackle and getting a lot of yardage up the field for the Seminoles is Corey Blair, a six foot three junior. He broke out of the shoestring tackle attempt. And for Creekside, Blair just the third receiver on the season that has caught a pass only two players last week in in Terrell and and Shane Kelly the only two that had a reception so Vincent spreading the ball around early getting others involved 35 yard catch and mostly run there Roderick McCrary his first carry of the afternoon picks up about 7 a helmet lost on the St. Peter's side. That's Xavier Miles. will have to sit out of play. Ball now at the 49-yard line. Second and three. Creekside last week had 406 yards of total offense, 296 on the ground. Last year averaged 370, 243 rushing yards. Barry on the slant connects with his man and a first down into St. Peter's territory at the 40 yard line. Damian Henderson, his first catch of the year, a pickup of 11. Yeah, nice job that time. Outstretched arms able to bring that in as we're getting down close to the end of the first quarter. First and 10 from the 40. McCrary, ball out, a fumble, loose ball. St. Peter's looked like they had a beat on it, and they come out with it. A turnover, and the fumble recovered by Hassan Moore, who starts as a cornerback for St. Peter's. And now both sides have a turnover here in the first quarter. That's huge for St. Peter's, not to state the obvious, but you, know, you had that turnover that you had on a promising drive. You had a drive that it looked like on your second drive you were marching inside the red zone penalty pulls it back and you know creekside's first offensive series only a couple plays before it was busted in for the the touchdown run the long touchdown run and getting a big stop from the defense right there definitely creating the momentum shift back to the saint peter's sideline 
Second turnover, first fumble loss of the season for Creekside. And before we have this first play from the 36, we have a flag. And it looks like it's on Creekside. Yeah, I think they had 12 Legal players substitution, on the field. I'm getting? Okay, yeah. That's another early season error to have. Even if it's your second game, that's still one of those early season miscues. So to the 41, it'll go, and it'll be first down and five from the 41 for St. Peter's. So see if they can take advantage of the fumble. This might be the final play of the first quarter as Dallas Reese flexes into the backfield. Bell will keep it. He'll flip it off, and it's eventually caught by Reese. And it makes something out of nothing. He'll get a couple <laughs> of yards out of that. And, Matt, that could have been a ball that was picked off and taken to the house with the way it just hung in the air for an extra moment as the quarter comes to an end. Oh, disastrous. <laughs> Ridden all over at that time. But <laughs> Great concentration by Dallas Reese. Able to bat it up to himself. And fortunate that ball didn't get picked off. And pull it in and pick up positive yardage it'll be second down and two for st peter's and we come back seven nothing creekside after one quarter of play here on flow football Scott Sudikoff, Matt Goldstein back with you in Atlanta. 7-0 Creekside on top. They had two drives in the first quarter. The first one was three plays, 80 yards, capped off by a 72-yard touchdown run by Travis Terrell. Their second drive was going really well. 52 yards, but then they had a fumble. 
Recovered by St. Peter's from at the 36, and now they've moved up to the 44-yard line. Second down and two, and a big run for Jalen Klein. Out to about the 35-yard line, dragged down by both Rodney, Roderick McCrary. As well as number six, Travis Terrell. <laughs> so your two running back combination there make the tackle of the running back of St. Peter's at the 36-yard line. And that was a gain of 20. First and 10 from the 36 for the Marauders. Who had a promising first drive end with an interception in the end zone. They punted their second drive, trying to spin up field up the sideline. After the catch it was Hunter Watson. Quick tackle made by Gray, who had the INT in the end zone. Another flag. Shane Kelly was also around the ball there. Yeah, ball took a long time to, to get over to the near side of the field that time, and it gave Kelly the, the time to come up and make the tackle pretty much right as the receiver caught the ball. Chop block. The call on... So, penalties on both sides. Yeah, I think it was uh, it was actually roughing roughing the passer on uh, on Creek side, and then again an eligible man downfield. Second time that's that's been called on St. Peter's. So in the end, nothing. That play just is disregarded. It'll be first and ten still from the thirty-six. Last year, the quarterback for St. Peter's Prep was Champ Long. Graduated 2,600 yards a year ago and threw 31 touchdowns. Tyler Bell taking over, sophomore starter. First and 10 from the Creekside, 36. Bell will take it back from Klein. He's going to run it outside the numbers and reach out to the 25-yard line. He'll gain 11 Tackle made by Ricky McCray. Ricky McCrary, excuse me. And you can see on that last play coming to the near side, Tyler Bell keeping his eyes up. Dallas Reese was near him, and it looked as if he had the option. Did he want to continue to run the football or throw it before he got to the line of scrimmage and had a little bit more space? Smart decision that time by Tyler Bell, and Bell continuing to impress with his legs here tonight. Picks up 10. He had that. Big scramble on the first drive, 29 yards on a third and 13. Gets 10 there for a first down, first and 10. Bell to the end zone down the sideline. That's about the third time that seemingly have had a receiver with a step, but a pass off target. Yeah, Bell definitely showing off a strong arm, but reeling it in is has been the opportunity. All, all of his misses have been long, overthrowing the receiver that time. It's good coverage by the defensive back, pushing the receiver towards the sideline, so there really wasn't much room, but still just the distance that he's putting a little bit too much air under it. So it'll be second and 10 from the 26. Two minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Second game of the year for Creekside. They beat Kennesaw Mountain last week, 35-23. St. Peter's Prep opening up its 2023 campaign. Klein in the backfield, behind Bell. Bell, rolling right, throws on the run, completes over the middle to D.J. Brown, tackled immediately by Phoenix Harper, who had an INT last week and eight tackles for the Seminoles. It'll be third down. Yeah, it looked as if there was third a little bit of two. miscommunication that time, and, and Tyler Bell gave him credit, rolling out to his right and then throwing across his body right to D.J. Brown, picking up eight yards. Third down and two. Two for four on third down is St. Peter's prep. And they get the man to jump. And that's going to be a first down for the Marauders. Yeah, it looked like Tank Holt that time 
on the hard count. Tyler Bell moving up to the line of scrimmage quickly and got him to jump and picks up the first down the easy way. Move it up to the 13-yard line and a fresh set of downs for the Marauders trying to cash in off the turnover. The touchdown, the points that Creekside has off a turnover, off the INT in the end zone. This is possession after a fumble at the 40-yard line by the Seminoles. And Bell is taken down for a loss as he tried to run it forward. Yeah, I talked about the way that Creekside likes to get pressure in the backfield. Ten tackles for loss last week and the second already here today. Loss of two. Second and 12. Two sacks last week for the Creekside defense. They averaged just over two sacks a game last year. They have 13 interceptions, eight fumble recoveries as a defense. Allowed only 10.2 points per game. On second and 12 from the 15, the give to Klein. Klein taken down from behind by Shimon Johnson and barely gets over the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Shimon Johnson, whether he's been on the near side, far side of the field, just quick burst, great job reading plays, getting off his block and making plays. Fourth tackle for the senior Johnson. This is an offensive line for St. Peter's that has a couple of Division I commits. Mason Lafon, the right guard, going to Fordham. Steven Lazama, the right tackle, going to Stony Brook. No gain on the play. It's third down and 12. Shotgun snap to Bell. Klein up the middle. is going to cut away from the tacklers and into the end zone almost untouched. A 15-yard touchdown run for Jalen Klein. And now the Marauders are the point after away from tying it up here in the second quarter. Well, and it looked as if Creekside was, was looking for a pass play there on third down and 12. And obviously St. Peter's rich chance in the third. The, the coach didn't want to put the ball in his sophomore quarterback's hands. We saw what happened on the opening drive with the INT. They give it to their trusty running back, Jalen Klein. Great burst through the line of scrimmage in for the touchdown. Now, lining up here, and will eventually flex into this alignment for the point after attempt. And the point after is no good. Look to be wide right. And it stays seven to six. I think I think uh, Creekside was offsides. I think they were through, and I also think that the ball, yeah, they definitely were offsides. I think the ball was actually blocked as well, and you wonder if that was any any part of the reason that they were offsides. They were able to get to the foot or get to the kicker quickly to block that kick. And just on the near sideline, it looks like now St. Peter's with that offside penalty, moving it up, and obviously the missed kick, I think they're going to go for two here. Okay, so the kicker, Aiden Lamb, going off the field. The ball now gets spotted at the one-yard line. And Bell is coming out, so you're right, Matt. to take this opportunity. Try to take the lead instead. They've got the big man, their defensive end, number 99, Joey Asian, lining up as a fullback right now. So that makes you think that they want to give to Klein here and try to up the middle, but obviously it could be some misdirection here. They give it to Asian, and he goes into the end zone. For the two-point conversion, so how about that? 8-7 St. Peter's. Oh, great play call that time. Asian, a Stanford commit, typically playing on the defensive line. 6'3", 275 pounds. Put the ball in his belly into the end zone. St. Peter's takes the lead. 
We've got a good one brewing here in Atlanta. Creekside scored their points off of St. Peter's turnover. St. Peter's answers back and scores their points off of Creekside turnover. 7.43 to go second quarter. St. Peter's 8, Creekside 7. We'll be right back here on Flow Football. Back in Atlanta, 8-7 St. Peter's now. As they officially go 64 yards after recovering a fumble from Creekside. 15-yard touchdown run on third down. It was a third down and 12. And a 15-yard touchdown run by Jalen Klein. Travis Terrell has a 72-yard touchdown run for Creekside. And that's how we've gotten to this score. The kickoff return is a nice one out beyond the 30 and now beyond the 35 and close to the 40-yard line. So, Seminoles will have it at the 37-yard line. Their possessions have the three-play, 80-yard touchdown drive with the Terrell 72-yard touchdown run. And then they went only four plays on their next drive. They started at their own eight, actually five plays, got to the 40-yard line of St. Peter's, and then had the fumble. So it's their third time with the football now. Travis Terrell back in at the running back position after he had a 72-yard touchdown, and Roderick McCrary last drive, he's the running back that fumbled. Both outstanding players. Both are going to be playing at a top-level program after they graduate high school this season, but going back to Terrell as we'll see them continue to flip-flop. Terrell, first down run, spins across the 40 and tumbles down shy of the 45. Reaches the 44-yard line, a gain of seven on first down for Travis Terrell, a 5'10", 158-pound senior. Last year, or last week, I mean, had 151 yards on 17 carries, averaged just under nine yards per carry. Terrell coming off the field, wincing a little bit. Looks like it's a, a lower leg issue, so they'll put McCrary back in. Snack it in three, play action. Barry going deep, but overshoots. The intended target by about 10 yards. Well, both quarterbacks, if you're going to miss, I guess put it where 
no one is going to catch the ball either. That time Vincent Barron well over shooting who I believe is Shane Kelly. Third down and three, and a first down rush for Hunter Perry. Yeah, we had Shane Kelly listed with two different numbers, and I believe he is wearing number four. Well, and and there is a, there was a twelve, and I think that's where we we got confused that there was a twelve for Creekside. Thought that was Shane Kelly, but Kelly. Obviously wearing number four, so not sure who 12 is. First and 10. Roderick McCrary, a second consecutive carry. In the St. Peter's territory, just shy of the 45. Gain of five. It'll be McCrary second down and five. McCrary, a little bit of a... Bigger back than Terrell. Terrell, 158. McCrary, 205. And McCrary, a top 100 player in the state of Georgia. Inside hand, inside give as he comes across there and picks up a first down, a gain of six. So now Roderick McCrary is rolling along. And we had been seeing nothing but explosive plays. This, this drive by Creekside. A lot slower, slower, methodical, ground and pound, pick up three, four, pick up five, instead of those big plays that we saw, 72-yard touchdown run, another big play as well. I hope that Andre Ivy guy gets his wallet. It's been announced on the PA about <laughs> 10 times over the last 30 seconds. Give him a second to get up there. And we got the play blown, play blown dead on first and 10 from the 40. Usually indicates a pre-play penalty on the offense in this occasion, which is the case as they trudge backwards to the 45. First and 15. Creekside led 7-0 after the first quarter. St. Peter's just scored on their most recent drive, picked up the two-point conversion. Vincent Berry being chased, throwing backward, throwing as he's fading backwards. And the closest man to the football was a St. Peter's defender there. Sahaj Bennett was the closest one to it in white. It'll be Second down and 15. And that's a smart play by, by ben, Vincent Barry, and, and that's showing off his veteran leadership right there. A senior, Barry's played you know, for a few years at the quarterback position and rolling to the near side of the field. Nobody open, so you know it, it was first down. Plenty of downs in front of him. Just throw the ball away. Second down and 15 from the 45-yard line of St. Peter's. Roderick McCrary spins across the 40, keeps his feet, and then slung down beyond the 35-yard line by a pair. Shamad Bailey, one of the two tacklers, along with Josh Callwood for St. Peter's, and sets up a third and manageable at the 34-yard line. Very manageable. It's third down and four. It's a gain of 11. the longest drive already in terms of plays that Creekside has had. They only ran eight plays over their first two drives, and now timeout. And I wonder again if this is just a, an official timeout. I didn't see either team call a timeout. And with the temperature real feel up over 100 degrees, Third down and four will be upcoming from the 34. 
Matt, your early impressions, I guess almost through the first half of this game, Creekside actually did call that timeout before this third down and four play. So Matt, your impressions of this one thus far, and what do you think Creekside goes with here on third down and four? Well, I mean, I think it's been a, a pretty evenly matched up game. I mean, we've seen both team have have explosive plays and we've seen both teams make mistakes a couple turnovers on on both sides and uh, obviously we had the long touchdown run um for creek side and you know both both teams looking to settle in we haven't seen the amount of penalties that we did in that opening quarter where in the opening drive there was five penalties thrown so i i think it's it's an evenly matched game i i think on the right before the timeout was called by creek side they put terrell back in so good to see that his ankle's okay, and he's able to come back in, into this game. But, you know, I think the running game is the strength of, of both teams. We saw, we've seen both touchdowns be, be runs, the two-point conversion a run. And, you know, I, I look for Creekside right here. I wouldn't be surprised to see either a running play or a, a quick quick pass in, into space to try to pick up the first down. Terrell back out there, as Matt pointed out, 72-yard touchdown run of the first quarter for him. 15-yard touchdown run for Jalen Klein. The scoring play for St. Peter's. They added on a two-point conversion by their standout defensive end, Joey Asian, who came on and lined up as a fullback. And that was after it looked like St. Peter's had missed the point after attempt, but it was an offside call on Creekside. Terrell changing direction, but only going to get a couple Laying the most contact there was Marvell Davis, one of the starting linebackers. And now Creekside staying out there, though. They're going to quickly line up on fourth down and three. They've got one yard there. Fourth well, down and three. If you don't get three. it, this, is, yeah, this, this has been about the field position that St. Peter's has started with every time. So if you don't get it, you're you're going into a familiar place. And if you're... Creekside, it's too far to kick a field goal right here, but also probably a little bit too close to punt. Why not go for it? Barry going to pass for it. Has his man. Has the first down and more. It's Eric Paul into the end zone. 33-yard touchdown for the Seminoles. Well, obviously the right call right there to get for it on fourth down. And Eric Paul just slanting across the middle of the field and putting it right in stride was Vincent Berry. Perfect throw and catch. Creekside back up on top. First catch of the season for the sophomore Eric Paul. Goes for 33 yards and the touchdown. And Creekside back on top, 13-8. And they'll line up for the point after. And 14 to 8 is now your score after a fourth down conversion is a 33 yard. And we got a flag. Well, let's hold on. <laughs> Everybody's leaving the field, so it must be after the play. Running into the kicker. So that looks like that'll be enforced on the kickoff. So, again. Fourth down conversion, a 33-yard touchdown. The pass from Vincent Berry to Eric Paul. Creekside is back on top. It is now 14-8. to The Seminoles lead the Marauders. We'll take a break and come right back here on Flow Football. Don't let that 
So with the penalty enforced on the kickoff, the ball being kicked off from the other side of midfield at the 45. So you got to think an onside kick here is a very high probability for the Seminoles, but instead they're going to elect to, well, they're going to elect to blow the whistles and have another penalty, I suppose. <laughs> Interesting strategy, though, there that from the 45, they're, the idea was just, just kick it out of the back of the end zone, make them start with a touchback. Matt, I know the kicking game is near and dear to your heart, so I'm interested in what you would do in this situation. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there's there's two different philosophies on it, right? I mean, you, you, you take a look at both teams offensively where their starting field position has been between the 35 and 40. So, you know, you, you could have the risk and go for an onside kick, and that's where, you know, they would uh, start with the football. But you also, why not kick it when you're that, that close? Why not kick it into the end zone, get a touchback, and then – you know, make St. Peter's have to go a long mm -hmm. way here with under three minutes to go in the in the first half. Well, now they have to kick it from the 50 after the penalty. Fourteen to eight Creekside with 2:50 to go in the first half. It's been an entertaining one and very evenly matched thus far. Both teams making. Equal amounts of mistakes, equal amounts of big plays, equal amounts of defensive stops. And we'll have an easy touchback yet again here. And so St. Peter's will have the football for the fourth time today. Their first drive began at their own 23-yard line to begin the game. It went seven minutes. They got all the way down to the 23-yard line. And on third down and eight, quarterback Tyler Bell threw one into the end zone that was intercepted. Their next possession, they had a punt on a three and out. And their last possession got down to the 15-yard line and on third down converted on a 15-yard touchdown run by Jalen Klein. First and 10 from the 20. See now if the Marauders have an answer. Bell to give to Klein into three Cardinal uniforms. Cardinal and Vegas gold, the official colors of Creekside. Klein gets a couple. Call it two. Now we'll see how good you are with your. Is it because is it Vegas Golden Knight? Is is that is that what Vegas Gold is, or was that before the Golden I, Knights? I think I know. I think Vegas Gold existed before the hockey team. Obviously, the look is very similar to Florida State, the Seminoles. Also, this look here for Creekside, second and eight pass, almost intercepted. Is that was. Red right off the bat and almost picked off by Zarian Jones, known as Saint. It'll be third down and eight. Yeah, again, Tyler Bell, just the ball sailing on him a bit, and Jones did a great job reading that one right off the, the throw of Bell and just missed a, what would have been a huge turn in this game. Jones plays the star position, normally a hybrid linebacker, Defensive back type. Third down and eight from the 22. Again, Bell has run for a first down on a third down before. He's thrown a touch. He's handed off to Klein for a touchdown run on a third down. He's going to fake the handoff. Pressure coming. Dances out of the way, and it's going to be brought down from behind by Shaman Johnson. Great job initially by Bell to avoid a big hit, give himself a chance, but Shaman Johnson ends up tracking him down. Yeah, Bell was moving around, and he was seeing some Cardinal and Vegas gold in his face that time, and, you know, who else but Shaman Johnson? What a first half that he's had as a timeout is now called by Creekside. They want to save some time here. They'll use their final timeout with a minute 33 left. you got to think it's... Fourth down, the ball is at the 24s. In the end, Bell did get two yards. 
So it will be fourth down and six. You would think there's no chance that St. Peter's Prep is going to entertain going for it here. So they're going to be looking for uh, a big punt to get this ball down the field and then just going to have to play good defense. If you're Creekside, you're going to try to steal some points before halftime and you know could go into halftime with a two-score lead if you're able to uh, traverse down the field. And the Marauders coming back out onto the field. Aiden Lamb is the punter for St. Peter's. Standing back just inside the 10 yard line. Looking for good boot, good hang time on this one. Snap, little looper, but Lamb gets the ball away. Fair catch called for and in traffic, caught there at the 46-yard line. That was not an easy catch there with a lot of bodies around. Andres Perret, oh, wrong team, excuse me. Get you the... Right identification there. There's Damian Henderson. We'll spot at the 45 officially here for Creekside. Yeah, just a 29-yard punt. So for Creekside, you call the timeout. You give yourself an opportunity here. Up six, minute 28 to go in the first half. And obviously a very explosive offense that you have. Why not try to put up some points before the end of the first half? Terrell in the backfield. With the quarterback, Barry. The wide receivers stacked on the near and far side. That's Sean Williams who goes in motion to the bottom of your screen. Fake the handoff to Terrell. Stepping up right in the pocket, Vincent Barry. And going up in the air and almost making the catch was Eric Paul, but it was broken up by number three, Chiron Grayson. Yeah, going for the big play on, on first down that time by Creekside. And I know no timeouts. Obviously, the clock stops with first downs. Plenty of time, but um, Creekside going for the home run hitter right off the bat. Incomplete. Travis Terrell, 72-yard touchdown run in this game and a 33-yard touchdown pass from Barry to Eric Paul the last time. The Seminoles had the football, second and 10 from their own 45. Again, no timeouts remaining with a minute 20 to go in the first half. Again, that's Williams that goes in motion. This time, Terrell takes the handoff, able to get away from Joey Asian. He gets across midfield to the 48-yard line. And Seminole fans wanting a penalty call there on St. Peter's. As it'll be well, third it, down and uh, a couple. Yeah, I mean, it, it looked to me on numerous occasions that someone grabbed the face mask of Terrell, but no flag, so remains third down. Third down and three. Quick snap to Barry. Rolling a bit right, fading back, and he's going to be brought down and a huge sack for St. Peter's to pick up. I, I saw think there's Bennett. a false... I think there's a false no start play. penalty, so I think the play was dead. Oh, well, this time a penalty for Saint for uh, Creekside actually helps them in this instance. So that moves it back to the 47, where it'll be third down and eight. Should be running now, I would believe. And so Creekside does have a timeout left. So again, we're just having trouble keeping track of when the officials call the timeout and when the teams have called the timeouts. But Creekside does have a timeout left, we're being told. 
And now, some confusion over the clock, I believe. I, they... I think they had to run the clock down because of that penalty. Forty-two seconds. They had to put it to third down and eight. Barry throws incomplete. Receiver fell down. Intended for Kelly. Man, that was in coverage. Hassan Moore. Fourth down now. Fourth down and eight. Well, Hassan Moore, who's an explosive player on offense for St. Peter's, we saw had one catch. It was the one that got inside the red zone, called back due to a penalty, a holding call, but. Other than that, Moore really hasn't done much on offense, but he's made a couple big plays in the secondary. So fourth down. And now... Timeout call by St. Peter's. That's Travis Terrell who's lining up back to punt. Yeah, and the personal protector was Roderick McCrary. So you have your two star running backs <laughs> in in the and, back. And, and why why not call a timeout and, and make sure if there's some sort of fake that your defense is, is prepared for. You can't take those uh, timeouts with you into halftime, so you might as well use them right now. And that may have been the intention of Maurice Dixon and the Creekside staff to just throw something out there and force St. Peter's to use a timeout to leave them without that timeout for a possible last uh, half-minute drive here. I'd be concerned as well if I was on the St. Peter's side and I saw that alignment. What's going on here? It's fourth down and eight see what they do here now they're coming back out with their punter clifford clifford ie who had a couple of punts last week both were inside the 20 average 50 yards on his punts and they fake it and they're not gonna get the first down though so after the weird alignment the last time they snap it to the up man who was Roderick McCrary. He's brought down at midfield, and now you give St. Peter's the football with some time to work with. We believe one timeout remaining and a chance for them to crack the scoreboard to end the half. Yeah, I don't really agree with that call right there. I mean, with 33 seconds left, it's fourth down. You punt the football. More than likely, St. Peter's is just going to take a knee and go in to the half, and a little bit over aggressive that time from Creekside because now for St. Peter's, you have an opportunity. You might not get in into the end zone, but you might set yourself up for a chance to kick a field goal and cut it to a one a three point game. First and ten from the forty nine yard line of Creekside. Bell with time, dances away, now tries to run, has some space, and Bell will take it all the way down inside the 30-yard line, picks up about 21 yards, and you really got to love that poise from a sophomore making his first career start. He got away from two different defenders, Zarian Jones, who was there, who looked like he had a beat on him, and it ends up being a big play. Yeah, by far the most, of, the most impressive part of the quarterback Bell's game today has been his feet. He definitely has shown flashes of, of a strong arm, but his awareness in the pocket and, and knowing who's around him, how much space that he has, when to take off, heads up play that time, and now you're setting yourself up again for a chance here, either for three or why not try to get into the end zone. Now the 21-yard run for Bell to the 28-yard line, first to 10, now back to pass. Classic pocket, throws over the middle, it's caught. Nice catch by Hassan Moore, has his helmet ripped off at the 15-yard line, and that's going to draw three flags on the field, and that might move the football inside the 10-yard line. We have seven, 10 seconds left in the quarter. Hassan Moore puts his lid back on. I was thinking this instance, too, he doesn't 
have to miss a play because he had the helmet taken off. Well, now will be half the distance, so it should be around the seven yard line and 10 seconds. Definitely enough time for a couple plays. St. Peter still also has one timeout left. As you see, Hassan Moore is coming back out on the field. I think I saw the official signaling that no, you can stay on the field. You didn't. It's only if you just lose your helmet in the act of a normal play that they force players to go sit out of play and to make sure they get their helmet properly fitted. So it's first and goal from the seven with 10 seconds. Another missing ID in the stadium there. I don't know why people keep <laughs> losing their wallets. Got a big play here, though. First and goal. Bell. Pump fakes. Gets away. Has space. Running to the corner of the end zone. Going to have the touchdown. Tyler Bell continues to impress. Seven-yard touchdown run. That may have been the final play of the quarter if he doesn't get in the end zone. I think it's the final play anyways, but... It was a possibility that he might get brought down and the Marauders won't have a chance to score, but he finds the end zone, ties the game up, and now they can take the lead back. Now, uh, just individual effort that time by Tyler Bell, and you're exactly right, showing no time on the scoreboard. And, you know, that's, that's one of those things that Bell will, will continue to learn, knowing that, hey, maybe if I don't get in, I got to make sure that I give ourselves a chance for either go for a touchdown and give give ourselves one more play or kick a field goal but you know bell great job gets into the end zone ties the game and an extra point away from taking the lead yeah the coaches might say to him on the sideline hey normally we might want you just to throw that one away save the time but good job getting into the end zone and that brings us to halftime the point after puts the marauders back on top it was 7 nothing Creekside after one. And you can see St. Peter's with the two scores here in the second quarter. And they have a 15-14 lead at the break. We will step aside for halftime. You are watching High School Football on Flow Sports.
15-14, St. Peter's up by one. Creekside, how y'all feeling, Creekside? How y'all feeling, Creekside? St. Peter's! How y'all feeling? Zone fix blockbuster, classic. Start the second half. Right here with the Creek Side Seminoles when it goes to St. Peter's Prep out of New Jersey. The Prep is reaching everybody out this evening. Great evening for football. The sun is starting to go down. Hello, everybody. Welcome back here to Atlanta, where a very extended halftime is a lightning delay went into effect right near the end of our normal halftime. But we are a few moments away here from the action getting restarted. Scott Sudikoff, Matt Goldstein with you. 15-14 the score. St. Peter's has the lead. Uh, Matt, uh, I was going to ask you about 20 minutes ago, but I'll ask you now. Uh, first half in the books. What are you looking forward to in this second half in terms of you know, what adjustments will be made and a big answer by St. Peter's at the end there to get that uh, go ahead score, uh, considering the fake yeah. punt uh, by uh, by Creekside led to the short field. Yeah, and like I said, when they went for that, whether they had got it or not, I, I questioned at that point in the game with the lead going for it with that little time left, why not just punt the football and go into half with the, with the lead? And you got to give St. Peter's credit, even though. Remember, the first time Creekside sent out the punting unit, it was Travis Terrell back there. St. Peter's calls a timeout. They bring in their normal punter, and they still run the fake. So it gives St. Peter's a lot of credit for that. And you know, and then it was the sophomore quarterback, Tyler Bell, using his legs to, to move the ball down the field, to eventually get into the end zone at as the clock hit zero and put St. Peter's up by one um, at, at the half. And o overall, I think it was a very evenly matched game. I, I think both teams did things really well. And I think there was some, definitely some opportunities with turnovers by both teams. St. Peter's obviously penalties were one of the biggest things that, that held them back. But I, I think from an adjustment standpoint, I, I think we're going to see Creekside, that explosive offense that we've heard so much about and you know, have seen the numbers from last year and in the first week of the season, you know, it really hasn't been there if you take out that Travis Terrell 72-yard touchdown run. Some statistics from that first half. St. Peter's, they uh, racked up 10 first downs, 139 yards on the ground, only 38 passing yards as their quarterback, Tyler Bell, did a lot of his damage running. He was 5 of 10 through an interception into the end zone. St. Peter's, we have them for five penalties in that first half, which is actually not bad considering they had four the first time they had the football, and they were four for ten on third down. On the flip side, Creekside only had six first downs in the first half, but they ran for 160 yards with 78 passing yards. Their quarterback, Vincent Berry, was four for seven with a touchdown thrown. Seven penalties on Creekside. They were two of six on third down and one for two on fourth down in the first half of play. So the second half, we are just about set to go. Travis Terrell ran for 96 yards on six carries, including a 72-yard touchdown in the first half. Roderick McCrary... Ran for 64 yards. He had a costly fumble, unfortunately, though, that led to St. Peter's first uh, touchdown, which was a 15-yard touchdown run by Jalen Klein. Jalen Klein, by the way, 12 rushes for 73 yards and that touchdown. In reference, Tyler Bell using his legs, six carries for 65 yards, including the go-ahead touchdown run of seven yards, the final play from scrimmage in the first half. Well, and Tyler Bell, Scott, I mean, you look at last year, obviously just played sparingly as a, as a freshman, but using his legs last year, only four attempts for negative nine yards. So some sacks probably factored into that but obviously that, that was one of the things you know coming into this game was you know what kind of quarterback is bell is is he a mobile quarterback is he is he someone that's going to sit back in the pocket and 
obviously not. Tyler Bell has been very impressive with his legs, has shown a strong arm as well. Creekside will receive the kickoff to begin the second half. They had four different players catch the football in the first half. Corey Blair, Eric Paul, Damian Henderson, and Shane Kelly. Eric Paul had the 33-yard touchdown catch and run in the first half. And this kickoff is whistled dead. If you don't see that too often. A kickoff that they're going to go back and do over. More time to well, they they figured the uh, the half time wasn't quite long enough, so let's uh, let's extend <laughs> it by another minute or so. St. Peter's had three players catch a pass in the first half. D.J. Brown two for eighteen, Dallas Reese two for eleven yards, and Jalen Klein had one catch for nine yards in the first half. Now I think we will officially. Get this second half started. There's Adam Gad, who's doing the kickoff duties for St. Peter's. So after the lightning delay, the weather seems to have moved out of the area of Morehouse College, and we should be good to go. Little pooch kick. That'll be fair caught. Just at the 26 yard line. And so that's where Creekside will have the football. Again in that first half, Vincent Berry, four of seven for 78 yards and a 33 yard touchdown pass to Eric Paul. Travis Terrell, six carries for 96 yards, including the 72-yard touchdown run. First and 10. Creekside from the 26-yard line. Vincent Berry threw for over 1,500 yards a year ago. 17 touchdowns, also ran for nine touchdowns. We'll hand it off on the first play of the third quarter. And getting in there for the tackle after a two-yard gain is Joey Asian. Taking down Roderick McCrary, who gets the first carry of the second half. He had nine rushes for 64 yards and a lost fumble in the first half. And McCrary, one of the most highly decorated players on the Seminole roster, top 100 player in the state of Georgia, close to 30 offers at FBS schools. So McCrary, obviously a, a top talent in the state. Well, delay on the handoff and up the middle goes McCrary and he is down just shy of the 45 yard line. And that's a nice play, big run, first down for McCrary. A lot of power pace. from McCrary. He's, he's that typical running back build, 5'11", 205 pounds, has a good mix of power and speed. Well, right back to him on first and 10 from the 39. He'll have another first down into St. Peter's territory across midfield and down to the 47, a pickup of 14 for McCrary, who will now come off the field and probably in favor of Travis Terrell now. Well, it's such an advantage for Creekside to have two running backs at the cal caliber of McCrary and Terrell. You know, a little bit of that thunder and lightning, but, you know, both players, big, top big notch running hit. backs, is a big, a big hit there. <laughs> Asian, you saw the right guard and the right tackle were pulling to the left there on that play, but. The defense of St. Peter's was ready for that, and that's a loss of two. And give Terrell a lot of credit for holding on to the football because basically as soon as the ball went into his belly, he was getting blasted and held on to it, did not fumble the football, and hey, now it's just second down and 12. Second and 12 from the 48-yard line. Again, the right side of the O-line pulling to the left, and again, the St. Peter's defense 
is ready. Wrapping up Marvell Davis with the tackle. Wrapping up Travis Terrell for another uh, short loss. No, no gain. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 12. Well, we haven't really seen Vincent Berry show off his arm much. It's It's been all about the running game. There, ha there haven't been a lot of plays run by this seminal offense today. And right now, St. Peter's, after those first couple runs by McCrary, loading 7-8 in the box and, and expecting the run. And that's what they got the last two play calls. And now it'll be third down and 12, more of a, a passing situation right here. Cordy Blair, tight end in motion. Fake the give to Terrell. Space to roll out to the right for Barry. He'll tuck it and run. Has his sights set on the first down marker. But he'll have to go out of bounds. About a two and a half yards shy. In a spot, though, where this might be a four down territory type of position. It's fourth and two from the 38. A gain of 10. Yeah, for, from here, no, no question about it. You're gonna, you're gonna go for it on fourth down. You, this is way out of field goal range. And again, if you punt it, if it goes into the end zone, how much yardage are you actually gaining? And you know, you have your senior quarterback and and Barry. And the initial progress was stopped by Samad Bailey. Terrell may have gotten it on the second effort. Needed to get two. Needed to get to the 36. Haven't seen the ball spotted yet. That is maybe just shy of the 36-yard line. Yes, it's at the 37, so that's shy by a yard. But the officials are not signaling. <laughs> it's almost as if they're discussing where the ball should be spotted. T-shirts. <laughs> Because you're right, the the initial hit was was well short of the first down sticks, and Terrell did a great job keeping his body going forward and falling forward. But from this this spot, you're you're right. It, it looks like it's a, a full yard short. I don't know what the the conversation's about. There we go. What we thought was the case. Turnover on downs. So Creekside now one for three. On fourth down, and now flags get thrown in behind our head official. Yeah, I think they're they're just calling a sideline warning on St. Peter's, obviously, with that big stop on fourth down, the sideline a little bit excited. Pit players were coming onto the field, and the first one's a warning, the second one turns into a penalty. St. Peter's take over the football. First half, again, 139 yards on the ground, 38 passing yards. As Bell and Klein, the quarterback and the running back, did uh, the bulk of the duty with their legs. Well, as if this game hasn't been long enough, we're... <laughs> we're it's figuring out exactly what the situation here is as the defense for Creekside is coming out and they will move the ball back. So they do enforce a 15-yard penalty here. So much for that warning. Yeah, there, the there, there must the have been 22. another ball. The, the, the initial signal was was the the umpire putting his, his hands back gesturing a, a sideline warning and there must have been something afterwards so instead of starting at the 37 they will start at the 22 first half their first drive st peter's was moving down the field started at their 23 got down to the 23 of creekside on a third down play bell went to the end zone with a pass but it was picked off by Kevin Gray, who's heading to the University of Virginia when his high school career is over. Then they had a three and out, punted on their second drive, but scored on their third 15-yard touchdown run by Jalen Klein. And then they had a fifth and final drive of the first half, helped out after they stopped a fake punt. 
It had a seven-yard touchdown round by Bell. Is that pass intended for Hunter Watson falls incomplete? It'll be second down and 10 for the Marauders. We have the sophomore Bell trying to get it to his tall target. Uh, another sophomore, a wide receiver, and Hunter Watson, 6'1", 170 pounds. And, and again, when, when Bell is missed, it's, it's been a couple, couple yards over the head of the receivers. I suppose better that than short, where it might be intercepted by the trailing defender. Second and 10 from the 22. Fake the handoff. Bell will flip it off to the near side where it's caught on the run by Hassan Moore. Sprints across the 40-yard line, brought down by a pair, Ricky McCrary, as well as Travis Terrell. And that ball to the 41-yard line, a first down, a 19-yard game. Now, this is the first time we've seen this 